What we found is that how people perceived the intent of the robot was really important to how they responded. So even though the robot touched people in the same way, if people thought the robot was doing that to clean them versus doing that to comfort them, it made a real significant difference in the way they responded, and whether they found that contact favorable or not. So in another part of the experiment, we actually had the robot either say what it was going to do before it touched them, or say what it did after it touched them, and we called that the warning versus no warning case. The results, um, the results suggest that people preferred when the robot did not actually give them the warning. And we think this might be because they were startled when the robot started speaking, but then the results are generally inconclusive. And we think this is a very important future step of this work to really try to figure out what robots could do to try to make a touch more um, enjoyable. There have been studies of nurses, and they've looked at how people respond to physical contact from nurses, specifically patients in hospitals. And, and they found that, in general, if people interpreted the touch of the nurse as being instrumental, as being important to the task, then people were okay with it. But if they interpreted the touch of the nurse as being to provide comfort, there, was, uh, there tended to be, on average, people liked that less, and people were not so comfortable with that. If we want robots to be successful at healthcare, we're going to need to think about how do we make those robots communicate their intention, and how do people interpret the intentions of the robots. And I think people haven't been as focused on that until now. Primarily people have been focused on how can we make the robot safe, how can we make it do its task effectively. But that's not going to be enough if we actually want these robots out there helping people in the real world.